Mainstream sedans have declined in recent years due to the popularity of crossover SUVs, but luxury sedans are still around and kicking. There's a 3 Series, C-Class, A4, G70, TLX, and the IS. But while all of those other luxury sedans that I mentioned have received updates in the last few years, the Lexus IS is trailing behind a little bit. So in 2024, does it still make sense to buy or lease the Lexus IS? Let's go for a drive and find out. So here in Canada, the Lexus IS is available with two engines. There's the big V8 in the IS500, which I liked very much when I last drove it. And there's a 3.5 liter V6. However, if you're watching in the United States, then you guys also have a third engine option, which is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder that is available on the rear wheel drive version of the IS300. But because I live in Canada and everybody in this country seems to think that you must have all-wheel drive regardless of the weather conditions outside, whether it's raining or if it's bright and sunny in the middle of summer, you must have all-wheel drive. So because of that, we do not have any sort of rear-wheel drive version of the Lexus IS apart from the V8. So instead we have to make do with the V6 and all-wheel drive and the V6 under the hood of this IS300 produces 260 horsepower and 231 pound-feet of torque. Lexus claims a 0 to 100 km an hour time of 6.2 seconds with this V6 and the all-wheel drive system, which is actually not too bad considering that this IS300 with all-wheel drive is quite heavy. But this engine picks up right away as soon as you stomp your foot on the throttle pedal, and it makes some really great induction noises as you do that. On top of that, it actually feels pretty torquey at lower RPMs whenever you put your foot down. In everyday driving, like how I am right now, the engine never really needs to rev past 2500 RPMs to get you going or to overtake a slower moving vehicle. It's a really nice V6 engine, but unfortunately it is not very fuel efficient. This IS300 with the all-wheel drive system is rated for 12.2 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 9 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. During my time with the car, I just barely managed to average 12 liters per 100 kilometers. Furthermore, Lexus recommends premium fuel for this engine. Paired with this V6 is a 6-speed automatic transmission. This transmission is great at providing smooth gear changes, which is the primary focus of a Lexus vehicle, smoothness. However, the IS is also the sportiest Lexus sedan on sale, and this 6-speed automatic is not sporty. It is slow to react to a pull of one of the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. And at times, it almost behaves like a CVT because the engine's RPMs don't seem to drop while the car is accelerating. They just hover at the 2000 RPM mark as you set off from a stoplight. The 8-speed that is in the IS500 is a much better transmission, but the 8-speed that is found in the BMW 3 Series, for example, is even better still. Speaking of sporty driving, the IS has double wishbone front suspension, with independent multi-link rear, just like the suspension setups of some sports cars. The difference is that the suspension is tuned to be a bit more comfortable than the sporty German rivals. This is a car that will take you to work every single day in absolute comfort. But it's not all lost when you find yourself on a twisting mountain road. The steering is direct, and the chassis reacts well to quick changes in the road. It feels stable through turns, not only because of the standard all-wheel drive system, but also thanks to the stiffened chassis of this current generation IS. However, it's not as delicate or as sharp as a BMW 3 Series or a Genesis G70, 
but this Lexus IS300 will still entertain you on these type of roads. The ride quality of the Lexus IS is exactly what you would expect from a luxury sedan. It's smooth, but also forgiving if you find yourself driving over some really poorly maintained city streets. This IS300 unfortunately does not have the adaptive variable suspension that is standard, I believe, on the IS500 and optional on the IS350. But even so, like I said, the ride is really good. The cabin noise is a little bit of a hit and miss depending on where you drive. So in a city environment, it is quiet. You don't hear the engine all that much when you accelerate from a stop. The tires are pretty quiet and you don't hear the vehicles all around you. However, once the speed does build up, you do hear the tires a lot more. Now granted, this particular car does have snow tires on it, so they are generally a little bit louder than all season tires. but it is something that you will notice on highways. Just look at that red interior. It is eye-catching and stunning to look at, but the interior dimensions of the Lexus IS are on the small side of the spectrum. Front occupants have an okay amount of space with just enough legroom and just enough headroom if the seat is at a lower position. As for that big hump that's on the driver's side foot area, I don't see it as an issue because your right foot is always going to be on the throttle and brake pedals your leg will naturally make a 90 degree angle where the hump is. On top of that, I found the front seats to be really comfortable for my body type. They have plenty of padding and a hip hugging fit that feels like a trusty glove in the middle of winter. But in the back seats, space is very tight for adults. Granted, I am not the average size adult at six foot four, so for me, I need to take up gymnastics to comfortably sit in the rear. But even average height adults will struggle for space because the Lexus IS has about 3 inches less legroom than the 3 Series and G70 and a whopping 4 inches less than the C-Class. Additionally, when you exit the car, be mindful of the door sills. Your pants can easily wipe the dirt off the car if you're not careful. Just like the back seats, the trunk of the 2024 Lexus IS300 is small compared to other luxury competitors. It has a cargo capacity of just 306 liters or 10.8 cubic feet. The back seats can fold down 60-40 for more space, but there's an awfully large step between them and the trunk floor. As well, there is a spare wheel under the trunk floor. One area where the 2024 Lexus IS300 has a distinct advantage over its luxury competitors is with the starting price. In Canada, it will cost you $47,250 Canadian, which includes a standard all-wheel drive system. In the US, the all-wheel drive system for the IS300 is a $2,000 US dollar option. This demo vehicle has the F Sport 3 package and it costs $58,050 Canadian. So $60,000 Canadian is a lot of money for this car, but it has almost everything that a businessman or a Lexus fan would want and need. Perhaps the only option that is missing is a head-up display. But other than that, it has new Lux synthetic leather, which feels like the real stuff, heated and ventilated front seats, a heated steering wheel, power sunroof, dual zone automatic climate control, eight-way power adjustable driver and passenger front seats, 17 speaker Mark Levinson audio system, an LFA inspired digital instrument cluster, a 10.3 inch infotainment screen, and a CD player. When was the last time you saw one of those? Speaking of the infotainment screen, it is primarily controlled by the touchpad on the center console. This is the older generation Lexus system that is a bit more finicky to use than the newer system that is found on the NX or RX for example. This older system does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but they are wired instead of wireless. The screen is a touchscreen which makes using those apps a bit more convenient, but to use the built-in native system, I found using the touchpad a little bit easier and more intuitive rather than the touchscreen. And finally, this generation of the Lexus IS received a mid-cycle update not too long ago. I think it looks great, but you have to be a real gearhead to know the difference between this base IS300 and the Top Dog IS500. Both cars have remarkably similar styling. The easiest way to tell them apart is by looking at the badge and the tailpipe design. 
Overall, I absolutely love the styling of this car and there's something sinister about the way that it looks as it's driving towards you on a city street. In the end, the Lexus IS is very much in need of an update. That is really evident by the infotainment system alone, never mind the interior design, the six-speed automatic, and the V6 engine that has the same power output as a turbocharged four-cylinder. But the Lexus IS has charm, and there's something really cool about seeing one of these driving down the street. However, if you are on a tight budget and you want to get behind the steering wheel of the Lexus IS, go for the base IS300 because none of its competitors can match it for the starting price. However, if you do have around $60,000 Canadian, then go for the base IS350 because you're getting the exact same gadgets that this fully loaded IS300 has, but you're also getting a more powerful V6 engine and still great value for your money compared to the luxury competitors. So that would be my recommendation if you are interested in the 2024 Lexus IS. In the meantime, if you would like to know more about this IS300, I have a written review with a few more details about it over on my website. You can find that link in the video description or click on the pop-up banner right up there. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely it'll be an SUV next time. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.